Guys, one of the biggest problem that I always feel with the DBAs is they always have a challenge to ask great questions to the client. Sometimes they actually forget that client is not a technical guy. They just want the requirement to be implemented. They want the deployment to be done and you are not actually allowed to send technical questions. Most of the times, if you tend to send technical questions to the clients, if the client is not technical, they get ignored. How do we solve this problem? So today, I will be walking you through do's and don'ts why you deal with the client for new deployments. If you get a deployment request like, hey, please install or set up so-and-so on so-and-so server from a client, what you should do, what you should not do, let us get started. So guys, the first thing that I don't want you to do is use negative sentences. I have seen a lot of DBAs, they will uh, say something like this. This is possible, but we can do it, but we can do it, but without this, we cannot do it. So on and so forth. Guys, you are a DBA, you perform your research, okay? You perform your research, you find out what is possible or not, and then give a decision like, whether it is possible or not. Avoid ifs and buts, you're a DBA and actually you can define the things whether it is yes or no. Don't keep the things in the gray area, all right? This is for everyone. Most of the times I see that the sentences are negative. It is not possible to do something like this. Whenever you write an email to the client, what you do is read through the email and find out these little negative sentences. These negative sentences, I don't want to use even if it is like something you have to write it. Try to be uh, positive or try to give a workaround. The best way is if something is not possible, give a suggestion. Always make a suggestion or give uh, your opinion about it. Like how can you deal with it in a better way? But try to avoid ifs and buts uh, just in case you are using it to scale the client. Don't use negative sentences. That's the first thing I don't want you guys to do when you're dealing with the clients, right? The next and the most important thing is guys, do not share your checklist with the clients. What I've seen is DBAs will write down what they have to do and send it to the client. Client doesn't know, let's say client is not a technical guy. Why do you want to tell the client that you will perform the prerequisites on the server, you will create an Oracle home directory, you will download the software, you will install the software, do this, that, that's your checklist. It's your job. You follow that checklist to perform your activity. Why are you sending it to the client? Just put high level steps. All right, you got a deployment. Let's take you have a deployment on AWS. What do you do? All right, we will deploy the EC2 uh, instance on the XYZ region, right? And then we start up, we perform the installation of Oracle 19C and we get the users, the connection to the Oracle 19C database running on AWS, that's it. Why will you give your checklist the, the steps that you have to follow to perform your job, keep it to yourself? Don't share it with anyone else or don't share it with the client. He doesn't need your checklist, all right? So when you deal with clients, give high level steps. Don't get into the uh, like little things of like opening the port and small stuff. The client doesn't need it. The third thing that I don't want you to do is assume things. Most of the times I see that some DBAs will write emails like this. Can I assume that the database name would be so and so? Can I think that this is this? Can I consider this as this? It's better you change those sentences and write something like this. My suggestion to this would be this. My suggestion is this. This is better than assuming the things and then pushing it onto the client. I'll tell you what, some clients get offended and they will be like this. Who gave you authority to assume? All right. I'm, I'm telling you, clients are like this. Just give suggestions. When you can suggest something good, something better, always suggest. Don't consider, don't assume. Awesome, guys. So now you know what you don't have to do. Now look at what all things you could do in a deployment or what you should do whenever you are working on a client's requirement. The 
very first and the most important thing is guys whenever you get a deployment request validate most of the dbs they don't validate the uh, requirements and what they will do is they will right away send an email that all right it's possible and later on they'll realize the database is not certified for the operating system and then they are requesting the client hey can you change the requirement no sorry apologies you know oracle changes no it was your mistake you didn't validate the request and then now because you are in a trap you earlier said client that okay it is possible now you are in a trap to come out of the trap you are pushing the things onto oracle no you made a mistake so whenever you get a deployment request no matter what kind of deployment first of all validate for example if someone asks you to deploy oracle 19c on linux version 8.1 what do you do simple you validate whether oracle 19c is certified for uh, linux 8.1 or not if it is not you tell the client if it is certified give him a good news yes it is certified right that's a great job over there validate all the deployment requests that you get if you don't validate trust me you will be in a trap the second important thing i want you to do is always use positive sentences throughout the emails while working with the clients for example let's take the oracle 19c is certified on linux 8.1 then you start your email something like this Hello Mr. Client, it's awesome to let you know that Oracle 19C is certified on Linux 8.1 platform and we will be able to perform this deployment. That's a positive statement, that's a good news you're sharing with the client, right? So what I want you to do is before you send an email to the client, make sure you run through all the sentences and find out how you can write those sentences or convert those sentences into positive statements that changes the way you talk to the clients and the third and the most important thing that i want you to do is this guys guys one thing dbs don't respect is or okay i think i need to use positive statements so one thing we should start doing is we should start using or respecting clients time right so we have clients and client gave you a deployment you can't just send an email whenever you want so you started the work and then you're like oh wait a minute i need to ask this question and you drop an email right and then later on you're stuck you again drop an email later on you're stuck again you drop an email mm, this can be improved you don't need to bother the client always you know what is the better way the best way is whenever you get the deployment and when you validate the requirement you're validating whether something is possible or not if it is possible good you inform the client by giving a positive statement awesome now you look at your entire deployment workflow like you want to deploy oracle 19c on 8.1 linux so what do you do you check the list of tasks that you have to perform all the internal tasks right you have, you will look for which server what storage uh, what network uh, and whether it will it will be multi-tenant or non-multi-tenant architecture you look at your list of things and then you come up with a set of questions that you need to only ask the client right one of the smartest question would be like uh, <clears throat> what is the database name right so the best way to ask great questions to clients is guys you look at your workflow and then you write down all the questions that you want to ask the client and you just get it done in one email don't try to send numerous emails see guys i 100 percent understand when there will be a problem if you are stuck you need some information from the client of course you can ask but technically lot of to and fro emails can be avoided if you look at your workflow like what all steps you will be performing to deploy uh, the client look at the entire workflow come up with some smart questions that you need to ask to the client send it in one email get it done right why do you want to waste clients time this is very important each one of us needs to understand that we cannot waste clients time we have to respect clients time we need to ask smart questions send it in one email done so by now you might have this one question like all right Arun, we get do's and don't can we see an example yes so let us look at this one example where we have one client's deployment request they want us to deploy oracle 19c on uh, linux 8.1 so how would you write an email to the client
all right guys so let's take you got this deployment request where you need to deploy oracle 19c on oel 8.1 version and set up oracle 19c home and database files in separate locations you are also required to create hr schema and put password as manager hash one two three now the big question is how should you start when you get such deployment requests the first step is to validate whether the given deployment request is possible or not in our deployment request we need to validate at least two things is oracle 19c certified with oel 8.1 and how do we create the hr schema post db creation if you are an experienced dba you know that hr schema is a sample schema that comes along with oracle database now while you create the database you can have the sample schemas or once the database is created you can actually execute some scripts in order to create the hr schema basically in the validation phase we tend to figure out whether the requirements are possible or not we perform small tests or we check with oracle or we check with google to find our answers once we validate whether the deployment is possible then only we proceed to the next step so once we have validated our deployment request and let us assume deploying oracle 19c on oel 8.1 is possible oracle certifies it and also we were able to figure out how we are going to create the hr schema once the database has been created once we have validated all the questions in relation to the deployment we build the activity flow and activity flow is like high level steps as to what you will perform in order to complete the entire activity now for example in our case our activity flow would be we will ask system admin team to build the server we will install the oracle 19c we will create the 19c database we will create the hr schema set up the listener and tns entries these are very high level steps guys for the simplicity of the example i'm keeping the scenario and the solution as simple of course in real time you might have to follow other steps to get the things done but for now these are our high level steps in order to complete the client's deployment now by looking at the activity flow we have one problem we have to create the 19c database but we actually do not know what would be the database name so this becomes a good question for our client now that we have validated the deployment we have built the activity flow and also we have one single question for the client we are ready to send our first email and this is how i want the email format should be the first thing is you give a good news to the client with proof and then ask the questions that you want to ask and finally give the timeline for the entire activity and here is how our email comes out we will say hello mr client oracle 19c is certified with oel 8.1 and do check the screenshot attached for your reference we are actually re-emphasizing that it is possible to deploy 19c on oracle linux 8.1 and also we are attaching a screenshot of the compatibility so that's the good news along with the proof then you list out the questions that you want to ask the client like i have a couple of questions what would be the database name and also you can give some of your recommendations saying like oel 8.3 is the latest version do you still want to go with oel 8.1 list down all of your questions in one single list and at the end you specify the timeline for the activity the deployment would take dash days the next big question that comes in front of us is how do you calculate how much time will it take for an activity 
see guys in real time there are multiple teams involved all right so to install oracle 19c on linux probably at the max should take only one or two hours but the problem is if you specify one or two hours to the client hmm that becomes a challenge in real time to get a server from the server team to get the storage to get the network allocations and other uh, teams to coordinate it does take time so i have a formula for you guys as to how to calculate the time it will take to perform any activity so guys the simplest formula is you actually look at the activity and you find out as to how much time will it take to perform the activity now the thing is if the activity is taking some hours or few hours to complete you count it as one single day all right that's the minimum day that you have to count so basically if an activity is taking two hours you still count it as one day if an activity is taking 18 hours you still count it as one day now one day let's take you have one single day to perform the activity you add one more day to it that is two days and then you multiply it by two that means four days now for example if an activity takes four hours then you have to count it as one single day you add another day to it that becomes two days and you multiply it by two that is total four days now imagine if an activity is taking exactly two days then you add up one more day to two days that becomes total three days and then you multiply it by two that is six days this is a great thumb rule to calculate any dba activity time so guys you have to communicate this time with your clients why because in real time the other teams might take more time to give you a server or to allocate storage to the server or to define or set up the network for the server you got to calculate everything also guys this is not like if you are able to build or deploy the oracle 19c before six days that doesn't mean that you actually wait until six days are over you can always communicate back to the client saying like hey you know what we over delivered and uh, here is your database right so whenever the activity is done early that's great but technically this will actually buy you more time in case if there are other problems other issues or other teams need more time now looking at our 19c deployment on oel 8.1 technically it should not take more than two three hours right now as i told you according to our formula we have to minimum count it as one day and then we add up one more day that is two days and multiply it by two that is four days in the second last line that's what i mentioned the deployment would take four days this will give you and the other teams enough time to perform the activities in a nice way that was awesome guys you know what respecting clients time is as important as respecting your own time right so now what i want you to do is below this video i want to know what are your best practices while you work with client so that we all learn from each other meanwhile i'll meet you all in the next video bye